Hello dear students, welcome back again. Now we are going to discuss about matrix display. Okay, matrix display actually uh, like, mat like matrix, okay, like 8 by 8 matrix. 8 by 8 matrix means 8 row, 8 row, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 rows. And eight columns one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and each intersection there is a LED. Okay, each intersection. I'm not showing, I'm just showing two or three. Okay, each intersection there is an LED. So there are each intersection 1 LED, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, 8 by 8 LED matrix. Okay, that is the concept of LED matrix display. Okay, what happened inside? It? You can see in this uh, slide. Okay. First, it will select this line. It will select this line and microprocessing unit will provide will provide the signal which LEDs need to be glow. Like if we want to, I just want to write A, that means this one, this one, this one, two, three. Suppose so I want to glow this one, this one, this one, this one. I don't need to glow this one. I don't want to glow these things. I also want to glow this thing. Okay. So when when this one is selected, it sends zero to all the output ports. Why? So, I don't need to glow any of the LEDs on this line. But when I am selecting this one, at that time the same thing happens. It gives 0 to all the pins so that no LED will glow. When I will select this one, it will give 1 to the all the pins so that all the pins will glow. When I am selecting this one, then it will send only 1 on this one and this one, all other zero, all other zeros. So only this one will glow and this one will glow. Okay. After that, when it will select this one, only the same thing will happen. But when it will select this one, it will give one to all the pins. So all the pins will glow. When it will select this one, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. When this one, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. One is scanning. Okay, one is scanning. After that, again, it will start from here, 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 and it will give the same type of things. Okay, this concept, as I told you on previous lecture or previous part, this concept is called scanning. Like one is scan. Again, the same thing will happen. Second is scan, third is scan, five is scan, six is scan. It will scan. If it can scan more than 10 times, our eyes will think like it's glowing like A. If it will refresh 20 times, our eyes will feel more comfortable. Okay, so that is the concept of LED matrix display. You can see here. So actually what they had done, they connected this thing with a microcontroller unit and used a, they are saying Johnson counter here, Johnson counter here and Johnson counter and one pin is connected with this thing. So Johnson counter will act according to the same timing of changing of this thing and the same, same, same timing of this thing. Okay, so time should be sequenced like when it's selecting this one at that time should be zero for all the thing. The same timing 
on the same timing it will give another one so that it will select the second one and it will give zero on third timing again it will give a pulse and it will be selected and it will give one to all the things that is the concept of 3d matrix display okay so very easy easy to use okay easy to implement with a microcontroller unit or a microprocessing unit okay you can see here for some example now the one of the most important thing lcd okay liquid crystal display in most of the cases in our uh, projects we use 2 by 16 lcd display that means two lines and 16 columns or 16 characters in each line two lines two uh, and 16 columns One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay, so two by sixteen LCD. LCD has a display data RAM. That means inside this LCD display, actually there is a microcontroller unit inside it, as it told. Okay, and also have a RAM which have 16 location uh, 32 locations each location for each display okay 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 14 14 32 so if we can if we address like 0 for the first one 31 for the last one we can see 31 we can see 0 okay so it has a RAM or registers to store these characters. Number one, ASCII characters. Okay, for information, it's ASCII characters. Each register in data RAM has its own address that correspond to its position on the line. As I told you, if we say zero, that means its position. This one, one, two, three, four. This way. Okay. Some other information. Three control signals. One is register select. That means we need to select this one and we will put first, we will put all the data to these registers. And after that, it will glow from here to here. Actually, it will scan from this RAM to the LCD characters. Okay. So, first we will just need to send the data to fill the RAM. Second, read write. Uh, actually, these are the control connections. Read write, can, you, can, you can understand by the next figure. Okay. And that uh, there are three, three ty types of power connection we're going to discuss later. And has eight bit internal registers. Okay. There are two internal registers. One is instruction register, another one is data register. So, instruction register to write instructions to set up LCD. So, according to the instruction, so here is some characters, then one RAM and then two registers. One is instruction register, one is data register. Okay, so all this thing inside a LCD. Okay, so instruction register to write instruction to, the, to, to set up LCD and data register to write data or ASCII codes inside the RAM. Okay, that is the concept of LCD. Now you can see the pin configuration here. The first one is ground, the second one is 5 volt VC, uh, VCC, then the brightness. You, you usually use a potentiometer or pod to how to say uh, uh, to control the brightness, then the reset button, uh, so, sorry, not reset button, register select, and then the read write, then the enable then 8 bit for data and then anode and cathode okay so here is the pin configuration with the microcontroller unit okay in this session we are not going to discuss you about the programming 
that is the part of our lab. So in lab section, there they are going to uh, let you know how to program for this kind of LCD. I'm just giving you the concept. That means what is happening behind the scene. That means behind the uh, circuit. Okay. So you can see here. You, you can see here. This is a half byte mode. Okay. I maybe have. Uh, okay. I, I I forgot to mention that LCD can be interfaced either in eight bit or four bit mode. That means the full byte or half byte. Usually we use half byte to reduce the wire complexity. Here you can see four pins are used for data transmission and of course VCC and the ground and one pin for brightness and the other anode and cathode are commonly connected with the VCC and ground. Okay, very simple configuration and another two configuration is for, oh, okay. So, enable RS and RW. There are three special connections. Enable should be always one. So, anode, enable pin and VCC will be connected together. Cathode and ground will be connected together. Okay, and it will be connected with a uh, how to say ground pin of uh, microcontroller unit or the Arduino uh, or Arduino. Okay, so that is the pin configuration. So by using this pin conf configuration, we can use a uh, LCD display with our microcontroller unit or uh, uh, Arduino. Okay. Now the buzzer. Simply, if we give if we turn on the VCC and turn off the and uh, give a connection to the uh, ground with the minus polarity, then it will just give you a beep. Okay, just very simple. So one is common ground and one, one is data. So when we will give one on the data pin, it will just give you buzzer and you will give a delay like how long you want to make it the sound okay if you want to make it sound for one second you have to give 1000 millisecond as a delay okay so it, okay, in this way very simple connection buzzer can be used in our microcontroller unit now motor controller okay how we can connect motors with the microcontroller first I would like to mention why a motor controller is required. You know, this type of microcontroller unit or processing unit, they only just give you very low voltage like 5 volt or 7 volt and very low amount of current as I can remember 700 milliampere. But most of the cases, in most of the cases, our motor requires at least one ampere current. So even to drive one motor, the Arduino or the microcontroller need to spend all his power or all its power, which is not a good idea. That's why we used microcontroller just for a signal to run the motor, but the power will come from external source. So here you can see in the motor controller, one power different power source, external power source is there for 12, uh, 12 volt, like in our Mongo career project or other, uh, in car also, it used 12 volt motors and all other components are 12 volt drive. So we are using external 12 volt high ampere power source, source, which is totally different from the Arduino. Okay. And from Arduino, we just have given some command, like to drive, to select which motor, and to drive forward or backward. So there are few uh, control connections that is connected with the microprocessor or microcontroller that is selecting which motor need to drive and also selecting whether it will drive forward or backward. So one connection is for motor A, another is for motor B, you can see here two motors can be connected with two uh, on two sides okay so which motor need to be selected and second whether the left one will drive forward 
or backward and in the same way for another connection whether the right connect the right motor will drive forward or backward okay so in this way if we uh, connect arduino with the motor driver then by using a programming code we can drive the motor forward and backward direction okay now the servo motor okay actually servo motor servo motor have three pins one from microcontroller that means how many degree it will turn and other two is directly connected with vcc and ground so no motor driver is required for the servo motor okay so for data pin we just send 0 1 data it sends 0 1 data and it can receive it okay so it doesn't require any external micro, uh, motor controller you can understand so for data pin that the blue one data pin is only giving the data of how many degree it will take the rotation okay very simple but for stepper motor in some other uh, lecture i maybe i am going to discuss you about how motor uh, stepper motor works or in some other course maybe you know how stepper motor works actually in stepper motor there are two coils in dc motor there are only one connection is required but for stepper motor there are two coils okay for moving the motor so one coil with one connection one motor connection and the other coil is connected with the other motor connection okay and then we will give the direction okay if we have to maintain the sequence by using this control connection that is very very important okay the sequencing is very very important so now you know how motors can be connected or uh, all other input de output devices can be connected with the microcontroller but to run all this thing you need to know the firmware how to write the software for these low level devices or for this kind of general purpose IO devices okay i am not going to cover how to write the softwares okay it will be covered in your lab section or in, in lab part they will they will let you know how to write the code for this thing or you can also go to the youtube you will be able to understand how to write the code for driving all these things my idea was to let you know how io device io devices or output devices can be connected with our microprocessing unit or microcontrolling unit okay thank you very much on next session i am going to discuss about input devices general purpose input devices thank you very much